Hello! Today's stories come from r slash malicious compliance. We have three stories today, starting with, let all the clients have the run of the place? Fine. Edit, for those who are confused. I am a co-owner, not the entire owner. I can make certain decisions and change certain things. However, it is still possible for the corporate co-owners and other independent owners, like myself, to potentially undercut the decisions of others. Keep that in mind, please, before you claim I stood by and let people destroy my business, which I co-own. Basically, I work for and partially own a media company. We do everything from video and film editing, audio repair and forensics, to music production and engineering. I mostly lead the music production and engineering department, and once in a while, the show, film, cinema, movie, streaming, audio engineering aspects. We, of course, have other owners and a board of other department leaders, along with consultants and such. The consultants and other purely business-minded and tasked associates are for the majority absolutely useless and totally disconnected from the actual day-to-day work of the company, and often come up with terrible ideas that seem great in concept purely to them, and sometimes will attempt to force us to at least try them out. As this is ongoing, I'll share how it's been thus far. In not a lot, but a few client reviews and follow-up calls from our also wonderful marketing and sales associates. Some clients complained that the environment and mood was too uptight and the staff was too focused on productivity and didn't let us chill or relax. Being a business that it is, thankfully, heavily booked, and with our staff always giving their all every day, of course our daily focus is first of all, safety and comfort of the staff first, and then clients. Since most of the staff, including myself, are women, and we get all walks of life and types of clients, as a second, working to ensure the absolute highest quality of production and professional atmosphere, that uses the clients and our time as best as possible, which to the sales and marketing and consultant staff must mean we are doing everything absolutely incorrectly and everything must change. And we still need to maintain our productivity and profit though. So they, sales and marketing, corporate heads, etc., not me or other department leaders, effectively told us about two weeks ago that we should try being a lot more lenient with clients. Not just time-wise, but allowing them to eat and drink in control rooms and live rooms even though we have a full lunchroom and cafeteria thing with tons of food and drinks available at all times. And of course, everyone is allowed water in the control and live rooms, along with also effectively telling us that we can only ask people to not smoke, vape, or generally potentially consume illegal substances in the buildings and on premises. Overall, it went as well as I thought it would. We had three or four client sessions. One went very well, and they were extremely professional, so there wasn't a single issue with time management and productivity, and the control room was clean and tidy for them coming in and as they left. Two other clients also were generally respectful of the facilities, however did leave the control rooms a mess with food wrappers and bottles everywhere. We had to pay our cleaning crew for more hours and more intensive work, which was a surprisingly high monetary and time cost. However, it was the last client we had under the new policy that was an absolute terror. They smoked heavily in the control room, consumed large amounts of alcohol, were running and jumping around as they were inebriated in the facilities and damaged some treatments and lighting on the ceiling. All stuff that their deposit and incidentals on their credit cards could cover, right? Sure. The worst was yet to come, though, on the last night of their session, after we had to factor in more cleaning time and basically two texts to fix everything they messed with at their own leisure, since we weren't allowed to stop them from messing with the patch bays and things in general, they smashed and spilled an entire bottle of something sugary on the mixing console, a recently restored SSL 6KG+. We are talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Effectively, they destroyed the console since the liquid caused arcing and burnt out the majority of the power supply and ruined about half the channels irreparably. That credit card they put down for incidentals? Yeah, turns out the 12k limit on it wasn't going to cover the tens of thousands of dollars in damage to the mixing console and the room. Of course, client disappears without paying or coming up with a payment plan, did not get their final products of course, so now we have to track them down for claims while the desk and room is currently under repair. We have had wild clients before. However, our policy of being intolerant of clients messing around and potentially hurting staff, equipment, or themselves has prevented any incidents. And even some of the most wild clients we have had have understood it is a professional environment and been extremely professional while working with us. Yes, I probably could have shut down the policy changes immediately since I completely foresaw the majority of the issues. However, I maliciously complied, as did my staff. 
to prove in the immediacy and for the future that the marketing and sales and corporate heads should have zero say on our methodology and policy unless it truly would benefit our staff and clients. The ongoing part is now there is to be a several-day review of the policy change so they can waste time attempting to figure out why it didn't work out and how we lost time and money on it. Real smart folks in the head offices. This really highlights the tension that generally exists between the people who sell a professional service and those that actually deliver on it. Clearly, sales and marketing are completely disconnected from what really goes on. Shocking. Let's check out the comments where we'll find additional details from OP. Our Jack suggested, tell them their plan only works when the client is respectful of where they are and whose equipment it is. And cancel all bonuses for marketing sales and corporate heads to pay for everything. OP replied, I am in fact going to do that now. There are about four specific people who really pushed the idea to us all and made it a temporary policy to try out. And it would be wonderful just to see them squirm during the review meetings next week. Their bonuses alone could cover a majority of the damage. And I have an absolute mountain of emails, memos, and documents from them about the policy and how it was either try it or we will try and suspend your staff. Pewter Fixer said, Since the change of policy was initiated by sales and marketing, it only stands to reason that they also hold the responsibility for the consequences. Therefore, operational damages are to be immediately funded by sales and marketing budgets so that you can continue operating with minimal disruption. Then, they can take the lead on recovering the losses from the former client in small claims court and or insurance. Former policy had a good reason to exist. Now, sales and marketing need to put their wallets where their mouths are. OP replied, Exactly. I am aware the insurance will cover the damages. However, we have to prove that there is no other way to recover the money for the damages. So far, it's looking precisely like the company is going to put sales and marketing, the corporate leads, and consultants at fault for the damages, since they initiated the policies, and for lack of a better term, intimidated and threatened me with losing staff and or suspending sessions indefinitely until we could review the policy with the corporate owners and other independent owner. Of course, I know I am going to be asked why I didn't stop it. And of course, I'll be citing their own policies about the limits of my decision-making and enforcement powers. And as said previously, they freaking threatened me with cutting my staff in sessions until they got what they wanted. This string of comments is gold. Someone said, I'm a retired RN, aka nurse. Our businesses are different, but when you deal with clients, some things will always remain the same. My suggestion? Take some pictures, and whatever else will prove what happened here. About 15 years from now, maybe sooner. The next group is going to suggest this again. Someone else replied, depending on your industry and turnover, it can be as short as a two-year cycle. Let me fix that for you, yo, shared. Ah, IT is it? Everything works and these people are expensive. Let's fire them and outsource for one-tenth the cost and pocket the difference as bonuses. Write up a contract with what little we know about our internal IT. Two years later, everything is broken and the outsourced people we pay almost nothing to only do what's in the contract. Turns out there is a lot of crap we didn't know existed that we need for the company to actually make money. Hire local staff as fast as you can at any price. Two years later. Our second story is, is this what you want? Fine. The customer is always right. I drive for Uber in the Dallas area and I received a ride request. I picked up the gentleman and it was a good ride. About five minutes in, the rider asked me what was on my rear view mirror. I told him it was my interior cam. He got mad and told me to turn it off because he didn't like such surveillance. I reminded him that the Uber app would have said there was video recording. There were also signs on the door. He could have declined booking a trip if there was a problem. It escalated when he yelled, You better turn that darn thing off or else. Or else, I asked. Yes, was the reply. Turn it off or stop this trip. I verified with him his request and he said, Yes, turn the darn thing off or end this trip. To which I said, Fine, have it your way. I will comply. At that, I exited the highway and pulled into a convenience store. He acted a bit stunned before shouting, What the heck are you doing? I calmly stated, You said either I stop recording or I end the trip. As I have no intention of stopping the recording, I am letting you out here. That did not go well for him, as he started screaming and hurling vituperative abuse beginning with F, questioning my parentage, and although correctly guessing my sexual orientation, was rather rude about it. I calmly ended the trip as per his request. That was the compliance. Here's the maliciousness, which although I'm very capable of, I rarely do. 
When ending the trip on the app, I gave him a one-star rating, as we can't give zero. As he really was getting on my last nerve, I added, feeling unsafe and abusive rider. As he continued to rant, I pointed to a police car that just pulled in and told him, if you don't leave my car immediately, then perhaps you might want to explain why not to that nice officer. After getting a few more cutting jabs and getting out, he tossed his open protein drink at my head, hitting the headrest and spilling all over the floorboard. It was at that time I got a text message from Uber support asking if I was all right. I said I was. They told me his account was suspended and asked if I could send the video clip to him. I said I would and also mentioned the mess. Uber support told me to just send them a picture and he would be charged a $75 cleaning fee, which I got within an hour. So I did exactly what the rider wanted, but due to his petulant behavior, he got a canceled Uber account and it cost him 75 bucks. If he would have just left, I wouldn't have done a thing. But play stupid games, win stupid prizes. <laughs> I love that saying. OP had a totally fair response and in my opinion, was calmer than most. Let's check out what others had to say. Unanceptimus said, Guy demands you switch the camera off. Then shows exactly what the camera is for in the first place. Definite Nobel Prize winner there. Parking employer replied, No, not the Nobel Prize. More like the Darwin Award. Cloud9 Fora said, Dude, what the F? How could you be so patient? That's incredibly amazing that you can keep your cool till the end. Like if it's me, I'd have stopped in the highway and dropped him there per his request. Technot added, Easier to act calmly with a video evidence to back you up being civil. If OP joined in then, it becomes both at fault. OP replied, Exactly. Calmness with a bit of smugness followed by a sincere, bless your heart, has a special meaning in Texas attitude. And now for our last story. Shut my mouth and get out of your bar? Okay. I used to work at a bar as the only female security. They'd had some very bad things happen when a man followed a woman to the bathroom, so they needed a woman that could keep an eye on what happened in there. This bar got in legal trouble all the time. The bathroom thing above, fire marshal closing them on some busy weekend nights for being way over capacity, the liquor board had pulled their license once already for over-serving and serving minors with pretty obvious fake IDs. I was one of the new security hired to help resolve all this. It was so bad, we had to be trained by a government ATF person and get a card to prove we knew how to spot and stop overserves and spot fake IDs. I think the real reason they hired us was to have scapegoats on the ready for next time they did this. So I worked there a while doing my best. The owner's wife was the worst. She was always drunk, always had her friends in the bar and bent the rules for them. She thought she was Lady Jesus and we should all be kissing her feet because she was the owner's wife. I mostly stayed out of her way and had no issues, but many co-workers complained about her. One night, some dude gets sick on the way to the bathroom. I cut him off. He ends up getting escorted out by his less drunk friends. I notice a man sitting at the bar watching this. He had creased slacks, a jacket indoors on a summer night, and no drink in his hand at a busy meat market dance club. I started watching him and noticed the badge under his jacket. Aha! He was here to watch for over-serving. A little later, a woman came to the bathroom, drunk enough to need to hold on the walls for dear life. I cut her off. She screams at me, then goes into the bathroom and tries to wash off the giant black Sharpie X's from the back of both hands. I warn her that she will be kicked out of the club if she continues. She screams again and staggers out of the bathroom. About five minutes later, owner's wife is in my face, screaming. The woman I had cut off was one of her friends attending a bachelorette party in the VIP section, and I was supposed to somehow magically know she was VIP. I was also apparently supposed to break the law for her because she was VIP. So she and I start a screaming match where I inform her that her husband had hired me to make sure the law was followed. I also started to inform her about the police officer at the bar, but she screamed in my face to shut your mouth and get out of my bar. She fired me on the spot. I didn't bother waiting to see if her husband agreed. It was known she wore the pants. I complied. I shut my mouth and got out of her bar. I walked past the cop, still sitting at the end of the bar near the bathrooms where the screaming match had taken place. I made eye contact with him, gave a slight nod, to which he responded by looking at the boss's wife, rolling his eyes and smiling at me as I left. They got shut down that night for over-serving the bachelorette party. This time, they went out of business because of too many strikes against them. <laughs> the best when people dig their own hole. This kind of reminds me of an episode of Bar Rescue, minus the rescue, of course. Let's check out the comments for some more laughs. 
Someone said, my favorite part about this story was the guy sitting at the bar wearing a big foam hat that said, not a cop. Laugh my butt off. Ninja Buddha said, this is honestly the way I think these kind of cops should dress and act. Not sitting there is full dress blues with a badge on their sleeve being completely obvious, but conspicuous enough that anyone who is paying any attention knows exactly who they are and what they're doing. Essentially, like in this story, if the staffer owners are too incompetent to spot the cop, they absolutely deserve to have the book thrown at them when they break the law. If they're paying attention like OP, they will make sure everything is absolutely by the book and keep their business going. Still, as the snowfall is shared, I was in the biz for 22 years, bartender for 15, and bar manager for 13. This story is glorious. With one owner, I had to scoop him off the floor and into a cab more times than I care to remember. Peter, your name is on the freaking locker license. It's time to go. Good on you, OP. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.